Red Dead Redemption 2 has a strong cast of antagonists that Arthur and the gang have to face in order to survive. These antagonists either span the majority of the game or are contained to just one or two chapters, but they leave a lasting impact on both the gang and the player. I'm going to be ranking all major and minor antagonists in the game from worst to best, with the ranking mostly based on their actions and importance to the story. Please note that there are heavy spoilers for Red Dead Redemption 2 ahead. At number 10 it's Colonel Fusa, who is first seen in Chapter 4 at the Mayor's Party, but is properly introduced in Chapter 5 when Arthur and the others get shipwrecked on the island of Guama. Fusa is the ruler of Guama where he runs a sugar plantation, and he and his men are just cruel, seen when they mock Javier while dragging him by a donkey. Fusa quickly learns the real identity of the Vandalin gang and calls in the Cuban navy to arrest them, while setting up batteries on the shore so they can't escape and kidnapping the gang's ship captain. Fusa is killed after Arthur uses a cannon to shoot down a tower that he was perched up on, bringing his rule over Guama to an end. Fusa gets the number 10 spot because he is the most forgettable of all the antagonists on the list. Even though most antagonists are contained to just one chapter, Fusa doesn't get any outstanding moments and is the antagonist of the weakest part of the game. At number 9 is Sheriff Grey, who is the Sheriff of Rhodes until the end of Chapter 3. He's first seen in the mission A New South, where the Anderson boys escape arrest and Arthur, Dutch and Bill help recapture them in exchange for Trelawney. He's seen again during the mission American Distillation, where Arthur, Dutch and Bill help him take down the Lemoyne Raiders and Braithwaite's moonshine operation. For the most part, Sheriff Grey is incompetent at his job and is regularly drunk. Dutch sees this and thinks Grey is an idiot who can be walked all over, so he goes as far as to become a deputy along with Arthur and Bill while they try to find the Grey and Braithwaite family gone. We have a life right. on a land so stupid, a backwater so backwards that even we are like geniuses. <laughs> Gray is mostly oblivious to the actions of the gang, but he catches on after Arthur and Sean burn down the Gray's tobacco fields. He responds by setting up the Rhodes ambush that gets Sean killed, but in the same mission he's killed along with many other members of his family and townspeople in Rhodes, by either Arthur or Micah in a crazy shootout. Sheriff Gray is a decent antagonist, but he poses little threat to the gang until the big ambush, and he's overshadowed by the other Chapter 3 antagonists who will appear later on this list. At number 8 it's Colonel Favors who is the main antagonist of Chapter 6. Colonel Favors is stationed at Fort Wallace and his main goal is to get the Indians to leave their reservation as it's rich with oil. He'll do this by any means necessary, even withholding vaccines and stealing the Indians' horses. Colonel Favors is condescending and proud, and it feels like he's trying to make up for an unsuccessful military career where he got the nickname High Tail Favors for missing an important battle. His arrogance causes peace talks with Rain's fall to fall apart, and he also demands the arrest of Captain Monroe for treason and leads the defense of Cornwall, Kerosene and Tar against an assault from the Indians and the Vandalin gang. Favors is responsible for the death of Eagle Flies, and ultimately is successful in getting the Indians to leave their reservation, but not before he's shot and killed by Arthur at the end of the mission, My Last Boy. At number 7 it's the other main antagonist from Chapter 3, Catherine Braithwaite, leader of the Braithwaite family. She first appears when Jose and Arthur try to sell her back the moonshine Dutch and the others stole from her. She then hires Arthur and Sean to burn down the Grey's tobacco fields. Catherine Braithwaite is very proud of her lineage and has a snobbish attitude thanks to her wealthy family. She's arrogant and will talk down to anyone she considers beneath her, often calling them scum or filth, but she learns the hard way that you don't mess with the Vandalin gang. After kidnapping Jack Marston and handing him off to Angelo Bronte, the gang responds by killing her whole family and burning down her manor. As she watches her legacy burn to the ground, she decides to run back inside, dying along with it. At number 6 it's Leviticus Cornwall. Cornwall is an unforgiving businessman and the owner of Cornwall Kerosene and Tar. He finds the Pinkertons as they hunt down the gang after they rob his train in Chapter 1. Cornwall is like a dark cloud hanging over the gang and is built up to be an intimidating figure, holding a high position of power and having many connections in the world of Red Dead 2. Cornwall is frequently mentioned throughout the story but only makes two actual appearances, first at the end of Chapter 2 and later during Chapter 6 where he's killed by Dutch. The rest of the time we learn about his business dealings through newspaper articles and mentions by name only. Cornwall's arrogance is what gets him killed. After he refuses to meet Dutch's demands of a boat and $10,000, Dutch shoots him in the chest killing him. Cornwall's death seemed inevitable. He was a thorn in the gang's side for the entire story and there was just no way Dutch was going to let him live. But I would love to know what would have happened if Cornwall accepted Dutch's terms and actually gave him what he wanted. Would Dutch have gotten the gang together and left for Tahiti? Would Cornwall have the Pinkertons set up ready to ambush the gang as they left? 
Maybe Dutch never actually had any intentions to leave at all and would have kept making trouble for Cornwall and the government until the very end. We'll never know, but it's an interesting what if to think about. Number 6 might seem a bit low for Cornwall, but all the characters I've ranked above him all have more commanding on-screen appearances. And number 5 it's Como O'Driscoll, leader of the O'Driscoll gang, who are the Vandalin gang's main rivals. Dutch and Combe have a long history. Dutch killed Combe's brother, and in retaliation, Combe killed Dutch's love Annabelle. In Chapter 4, the O'Driscolls catch up with poor Kieran Duffy and kill him off screen. Seeing Kieran walked back into camp on a horse is easily one of the most gruesome visuals in the main story. Combe and his men are also responsible for the death of Jake Adler, Sadie's husband, as they raid their cabin in the snow. This creates one of the most powerful characters in Red Dead Redemption 2 in Sadie Adler, as she stops at nothing to make sure Combe and his men pay for ruining her life. Despite being an important figure in the story like Leviticus Cornwall, Combe O'Driscoll only makes two proper appearances. First he sets up a meeting as a way to kidnap and torture Arthur. He then plans to turn Arthur and the gang over to the law, but Arthur manages to escape. Later in Chapter 6, he's arrested and sentenced to death, and Dutch, Arthur and Sadie ensure that the O'Driscolls can't help him escape. Combe gets hanged for his crimes in such a tense moment where we see so much fear and panic on his face. At number 4, it's Angelo Bronte, an Italian businessman and the main antagonist of Chapter 4. Bronte is a powerful crime lord that basically runs the city of San Denis. He gets the kids and teens of San Denis to keep an eye on things on the streets. Arthur only learns where Bronte lives after one of the kids rob him. Bronte is first mentioned by Catherine Braithwaite and is seen for the first time when Arthur, John and Dutch go to ask him to get Jack back. Bronte can be intimidating because of his status and his false friendliness. He invites Dutch to the mayor's party and tells him about the trolley station that is supposedly full of cash. This is obviously a trap to try and arrest Dutch and the others. Dutch promises revenge on Bronte and he gets it after the gang raid his house and kidnap him. In one of Dutch's more savage moments, he drowns Bronte and feeds his body to an alligator. Angelo Bronte is just so well acted and I think he's the best of the antagonists constrained to one chapter. At number 3 it's the gang's leader Dutch Vandalin. Dutch is one of the best written characters in the game and has so many memorable and funny quotes. Maybe you and Charles can go take a look, clear off anyone you find before the whole lot of us move in looking so conspicuous. And how are we gonna do that? I don't know. Start dancing? At first I wasn't sure if he fit being on this list. For much of the story, he doesn't fit the role of an antagonist like the others on here. It's only towards the end of Chapter 4 does he begin to unravel, and we get to see the true Dutch Vanderland. Dutch is delusional about his place in the world. He tries to make the gang seem more than a bunch of killers and thieves. For the first three chapters, Dutch is a charismatic leader with a strict code and a genuine care for all the members of his gang, even seeing Arthur and John as his sons. But as the leader, Dutch makes the final decision on all things, which leads the gang into all their bad situations. From the Blackwater Ferry to robbing Cornwall's train, which Hosea insisted was a bad idea. Insist? As the story progresses, Dutch gets increasingly more impulsive and doesn't care who gets hurt if it means he gets what he wants. This is clear when he stirs up the Indians to attack the US Army so he can steal some state bonds. Above all else, Dutch hates to be questioned and to feel like he's being disrespected, so he betrays anyone who he feels is asking too many questions. First he doesn't help John in the San Denis bank, and then walks out on Arthur while he begs to help him in Cornwall's factory. After the death of Hosea, Micah becomes the voice in Dutch's ear and Dutch is too narrow-minded and focused on causing chaos to see he's being manipulated. Dutch finally realises his mistakes when Arthur is pleading to him as he's dying, but that point it's mostly too late. But at least Dutch is there at the end of the epilogue in the final standoff when he shoots Micah, helping John to kill the man who ruined his gang. And number two, it's Agent Milton of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Agent Milton and the Pinkertons are mostly funded by Leviticus Cornwall, and their one goal is to hunt down members of the gang, and more specifically, Dutch Vanderland. Agent Milton first meets Arthur when he goes fishing with Jack. He then chases the gang all across the map, finding them at their Clemens Point, Le Gras, and Beaver Hollow camps. Agent Milton was responsible for the deaths of Matt Callender, a gang member we never got to meet, and Hosea, who he caught and shot during the San Denis bank robbery. Agent Milton is relentless in his pursuit of the gang which makes him such a great antagonist. He'll even go as far as to open fire with a Gatling gun on a wooden shed that had the gang members trapped inside, including Jack 
Jack and some unarmed women. As players, we're supposed to hate Milton for what he's doing to the gang, but the game gives us a unique perspective. In the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, Milton and the Pickertons are seen as heroes that are doing society a favour by hunting down the gang, and the deaths of Hosea and Lenny are celebrated in the newspaper. In his last effort to capture some of the gang members, Milton kidnaps Abigail and holds her hostage at Van Horn, baiting Sadie and Arthur into rescuing her. In one of the best moments in the game, thinking that he has a sick Arthur defeated, Milton reveals that Mike is the rat of the gang and has been helping them ever since the gang got back from Guama. Milton takes too long to kill Arthur, allowing Abigail to shoot him in the head. And at number one, the best antagonist in Red Dead Redemption 2 has to be Micah Bell. I feel like Micah is the only possible choice for the number one spot. He's just so hateable. He does an amazing job of getting under the skin of both the gang members and the player. He becomes a true antagonist in Chapter 6. Before that, he and Arthur mostly just disagree about the way things should be done. Chapter 6 is after the point Micah has ratted out the gang to the Pinkertons and he's manipulating and stirring Dutch up. Micah is unhinged and loves chaotic situations. He's also clearly jealous of Arthur and his standing with Dutch. His constant insulting of Arthur's tuberculosis and not being able to do anything about it is so frustrating. If Arthur has low honour, Micah will go as far as to kill Arthur to get rid of him either shooting him in the face on the mountain or stabbing him at camp. Micah gets way too comfortable in the gang despite only being with them for six months, and when the gang is all but done, he sees an opportunity to get ahead when he invites Cleet and Joe into the gang. It's also implied that Micah kills Kane, the gang's dog and Jack's best friend. Between the events of Chapter 6 and the epilogue, Micah becomes even more sadistic, building his own gang and killing a family, including a young girl just for getting in his way. Micah goes unsighted in the epilogue until the final mission American Venom, where he and his gang have made camp on Mount Hagen. John, Sadie and Charles go and get their revenge on Micah for destroying the gang, and with an assist from Dutch, John kills Micah. For causing the collapse of the gang and for his treatment of the other gang members, Mike is easily the best antagonist in Red Dead Redemption 2. But let me know if you agree with my ranking and how you would rank all these antagonists in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please think about hitting the like button and subscribing, and checking out some of my other videos on Red Dead 2. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.